Good morning from Flagstaff, Arizona. Yesterday was exciting. We got to see Winslow. We got to see the Meteor Crater. That was great. <clears throat> Until I arrived at the hotel, and then uh, things went a little bit downhill. I'm not going to focus on this bit too much, but it's worth mentioning. Um, throughout this trip, I'd taken out a, sort of a data contract with three in the UK who promised that you know your data will work in something like 18 different countries around the world no extra charge just works that's just a blatant lie <laughs> so uh, I understand the concept of mobile data you need to have a signal etc uh, and some of these desert places are not going to have a great signal big cities should and I'm pretty sure even small towns will these days it just doesn't work uh, so I've been lacking mobile data for most of the trip I'll take it up with them when I get back but um, it turns out when I arrived at the hotel the Wi-Fi is not working now that's a problem because uh, I haven't booked everywhere that I want to stay it's one of those things you either you either got to plan out everything in advance and then you're kind of stuck if you if you see a detour that you want to take uh, look at something cool um, you, you then you can't because you have to be in a certain place at a certain time because you've booked everything or you can do what I'm doing <clears throat> which is book <clears throat> slightly in advance <clears throat> but you need a data connection to do it there's no Wi-Fi that's then a problem so they did actually fix the Wi-Fi and it wasn't until about half past 10 10.30 last night so that was a bit of a problem for me glad it is fixed otherwise I would have nowhere to stay <laughs> tonight oh, I would probably just look to go into <clears throat> you know, the nearest McDonald's or something McDonald's always has Wi-Fi right so it's not the end of the world um, but yeah I went out to I took a recommendation because I couldn't look up any places to eat last night I took a recommendation from the hotel went to a place downtown it was Friday night oh, I was packed it was really not good it was like the worst the worst of America all wrapped up into one restaurant you had noisy people, drunk people, <coughs> very slow service, really weird service. I bought a drink for two dollars fifty, gave them five. Would you like any change? Well, I'm going to tip you a hundred percent. I don't think so. But that's out of the way, so I'm moving on. <coughs> uh, today will be really interesting because uh, I'm going through Seligman uh, with a snow cone, um, the snow cap. I keep calling it a snow cone. It's a snow cap. It's a really quirky sort of place to get a drink. And then through Peach Springs. Peach Springs is the place after which Radiator Springs from the movie Cars takes its name. So that was the inspiration for that. I'm interested to see what that's like. And then uh, through the Open Trail. And the Open Trail is a mountain pass, which uh, is going to be the most dangerous section of road. Oh, I'm not really that worried. It's not like it's, you know, you're going to be falling off cliffs or anything like that. I hope. Uh, but it should make some, uh, make some really stunning uh, video when I get there. It is going to be a long day though. I'm going to end up in Parker in uh, Arizona, just next to the border. Uh, here's the thing, that, that place is not on 66. Normally you'd, you'd leave the open trail and you go down to Needles, uh, but I'm going to skip that for a day because I want to visit the old mining town at Swansea, which should be uh, should be really interesting. I hope I can get there. I'm not even sure. It's just a a dead mining town in the middle of nowhere. I'm interested to you know catch up on sort of what's there and how that might have come to be. It's a long drive though. I'm going to get started early.
Well, that was a snow cap drive in <coughs> in Seligman, just over here. Definitely, definitely one of a kind. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the fake door handles got me twice. Uh, so there's, there's two handles, there's one either side of the door and you don't notice the one that you're supposed to pull. <coughs> uh, the whole place is like that. Uh, I went in there, a uh, lady running the place uh, squirt, squirted me with mustard, but it was fake mustard. Um, and then they've got various sirens and things going off, supposed to scare you. <laughs> Uh, you can see from the pictures, it's just, <clears throat> it's just a crazy place. Uh, nothing else, nothing else like this. Wow. So from here, I'm heading out to uh, Peach Springs. So this is it. <clears throat> this is Peach Springs, Arizona, and it's the, uh, the town on which Radio the Springs was based. It's plain to see why. I mean, when when Route 66 was the only road coming through here, everyone would have come past. You know, everyone would have had some way to stop, refuel, get some food and drink, that kind of thing. Now uh, we're nowhere near I-40. It's like a major detour to get here. There's really no reason unless you live in Peach Springs or you're visiting specifically to come along this road at all, you know? Have a look. And I feel like a lot of these towns went the same way, you know? There's still people living here. Uh, there's stores and there's a school, there's lots of things you'd find in a regular town is just um there's no more travelers you know except those die-hard 66 fans who want to do this kind of thing me included i suppose uh interesting to see it but um no real reason to stop these days just kind of sad So this is a Hackberry, or nearby Arizona. Behind me is a Hackberry General Store. Opened in 1934, uh, when Route 66 first came through here. And uh, same story as everywhere, you know. By the 1970s, the, the interstate was finished. And this place was pretty much finished, you know. Nobody would come through here. It's not anywhere near the interstate. And, uh, you know, trade dried up. So closed down and then when there was a resurgence in the tourism by 19, well, the 1990s, the, the place reopened and no longer sells any kind of gas, but uh, interesting selection of touristy kind of stuff. And it's pretty busy, really. I mean, it's good to see that so many people are coming down this road. There's a map inside. There's people from all over the globe have put their, their pin where they live on the map and a whole load of currency, just people leaving banknotes and things like that as well. Fascinating place. Uh, almost missed it as well, uh, just 
really in the middle of nowhere, just, uh, just by the side of the road here, nothing else for miles around. Well, this is it, the start of the Oatman Trail over the mountains, which are just over there. It's going to be quite some trip, I think. Gonna take it easy, but I think some real time video is in order. So I'm looking forward to this drive, one of the highlights of the trip. was open Arizona this is like a tourist 
trap completely. I mean, it's just, you can't drive through it without going about five miles an hour. <clears throat> There's just donkeys. Just donkeys just randomly roaming the street here. <clears throat> That's pretty crazy. And uh, <clears throat> and they, they sell loads of food to the tourists, and then they feed the donkeys. Uh, so these are some pretty fat donkeys. But, um, interesting place, yeah. It's got a lot of history to it. But like a lot of these places on the road, I can't stop for that long. I stopped, I have my Navajo tacos. They're pretty good. And now I've got to hit the road again. Welcome to Lake Havasu City in Arizona. America, what have you done? What is this? Do you remember that story where some Americans purchased the bridge, the London Bridge, and moved it here? No? Yeah, look it up. This is London Bridge. in Arizona. What have you done? 